Hey folks, Studio here. Let's break down some patch notes. Hell yeah. Alright, so if you've never seen one of these before, I'm going to go through the patch notes, talk about the more important changes. For example, you can't see it, but above that blitz crank, there's an Annie change. She received a visual upgrade. Not a big deal. But blitz crank and all the other changes on the board that are important, we'll look at them, we'll talk about them, talk about the design decision behind what, what got changed and how it will affect the game. So blitz crank. Mana reduction, 240 mana base instead of uh, 300. 120 mana for rocket grab instead of 110. Reduction in overall mana, increase in rocket grab's mana cost. What does it mean for level 1? So, obviously, you cast two uh, rocket hooks now. You're out of mana. That's 240 mana. You're gone. Most people don't pick up the mana mastery and uh, utility on support blood crank. Maybe now it's going to be a lot more effective. But still, even with that, you're out of mana. Uh, what does it really mean for his level 2 though? Uh, you can really easily point out the level 1 part, but normally, let's say you use 2 rocket hooks level 1. 220 mana spent, you have 300 base, you have 80 left over, you level up, you have an extra 40, this means you're going to very quickly have enough for rocket hook and power fist combined, which is 135 mana last patch. Now, let, let's say you hit level 2 on Blitzcrank. You haven't casted a single rocket grab, so you have 340 mana, which uh, is what he normally gets, 40 mana per level. Or not 340, 280. 340 were old values. So 280. You cast a rocket grab, you miss. So you're minus 120. You cast another rocket grab, you, you hit it, and you land a power fist. It doesn't kill, though. It's really close. It's one of those tight matches. You might have blown a flash, but they drank potions. They're healing back up. They have a Sono just spamming W. So you didn't get the kill. How much mana do you have left over after that combination of spells? So you have 15 mana left over. Now, all right, you're going to have a lot more than that because some will tick in. You might have as much as 40. What does that really mean, though? You have no mana. You have enough mana for a power fist. This means if they let you walk up to them, you are a bad Leona or Taric. So, this really means that Thresh is probably a better Blitzcrank now. But in the end, uh, if you're playing Blitzcrank, you're all about the all-in early on. Before it used to be, you could toss out a couple hooks, you might go close to Oom, um, but you had enough base and the cooldown on Rocket Grab was so high, you would always get enough back, generally. You, you could, of course, go in if you spammed like crazy. But usually, you wait for enough situations where it just wouldn't happen. Now, it's going to take a long time to get enough mana for a rocket hook uh, power fist combination. If you go totally oom. Overdrive? Don't even think about over overdrive to like level 5, maybe even level 9. Like, you're going to have to wait a long time to, to become normal Blitzcrank. So he's very all-in right now. He's very very aggressive. You make a mistake, you uh, don't use the presence of your fist enough and your hook to zone people out, you're gonna get your butt kicked. It's now a much tougher lane just because level 1 and level 2 are very very weak. If they can bait out two hooks, you're, you're dead. You're screwed. They're just gonna auto attack you non-stop and just say, sorry Blitzcrank, you're, you're not doing anything today. Now, he will still be good. He'll still be effective late game for those big hooks, but you know, maybe he won't be that solo Q star which uh, people really were annoyed by. I'd say even in uh, competitive matches, like the, the best of the best, not many people would get hit by Blitzcrank hooks uh, early on. And the people who did land those Blitzcrank hooks, like Mad Life, like the really, really good Blitzcranks, generally they do so with very few hooks. It's, it's more of a mind, it's more of a reading type thing where they just read a player well. It's going to be a big risk, though. I wouldn't be surprised if he picked less in tournaments because of that. Cho'Gath nerf. Um, this is... Kind of shutting down Cho'Gath potential to counter pick. Now, you don't see it a lot, but Cho'Gath will shut down, for example, Riven. Riven, if she casts Broken Wings, I, I want to say that you have three seconds to cast another Broken Wings, uh, her Q, before you, you can no longer cast it. If Cho'Gath lands a full duration silence, she is screwed. She can get Burke Treads, but it's still pretty unfun. Uh, the point here is that this was just an old CC duration. Three seconds is a long time, even for just a silence. It shuts down so many characters, though. So any character that has to use a lot of combos, they get hit by a silence, there goes their combo. Any character like um, Riven, for example, kind of the same thing, where they have to proc off earlier spells, there go their combos. It is a really, really devastating spell, and it's still going to be amazing. Two and a half second silence is really good, but they're just kind of sweeping that up from their older um, 
changes. It used to be like a four second removal ultimate, a four second silence on Blitzcrank ultimate. This used to be kind of a weak CC. Now it's going to be pretty good, despite the fact that it's been nerfed. Now, Elise's changes are fun because they're completely the same as Blitzcrank's, but not nearly as effective. So, how does Elise harass? Let's say you're level 2 Elise, and we'll, we'll go with the more efficient harass. This is how Elise harasses. Alright, she presses her Q, and then she presses her Q again. She might go spider form and press her Q. And she presses her Q, and then she might go spider form again and press her Q. So, how much mana does it cost? 240, which she can afford. I think she'll have a 290 level 2. Uh, if someone comes up to gank her, repel um, would still be available. But the, the entire point is that Elise is still going to be effective. Now, normally, how do you use her spells? Cocoon, her stun. You use that to escape or to secure harass with uh, spider form Q. This means you land a neurotoxin, you switch spider form, and this just means it's a free trade. Because you stun someone with Cocoon and uh, they can't respond if you go into spider form. It's actually super effective because you can go to spider form, Q, uh, activate your W, walk away, so your spiders keep attacking, and then it's just, holy crap, you're being mean. What's the case going to be now? Well, you can still do that. It's just that she uses so few spells in landing besides her uh, spider form spells because all of them are effective, and the W provides healing, that she just doesn't go oom. It just, it just does not happen. So you might have to be a little bit wiser. You can't just spam, spam Cocoon. But I'd say the best of the best players, they're not really going to be affected by this. I'm not sure if there are any characters who have enough sustain anymore to uh, survive at least. Maybe someone like Lee Sin could possibly do it if he just maxes out the shield first, goes for that really passive lane. But in the end, uh, any AP character she's up against, she can buy a Chalice. Uh, all the physical characters, obviously that's not as good an option, but she still might be able to pick up a Flask. And that that's an extra, uh, I think, what, 180 mana? Which, it's going to be two to like one and three quarters of a spell but that's still enough usually because her damage is just so ridiculously high she should still be pretty good now Ezreal he's in a different boat he's in a much much weaker boat so base movement speed 325 from 330 this is just kind of cementing him into a a kiting position but based off his skills and items other characters can kite with a lot less so you're someone like Vayne you use tumble but you also you can use it consistently. Ezreal, use Arcane Shift. That's it. That's your escape mechanism, unless you pick up a Frozen Fist. Vayne, it's tumble, 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 tumble. Ezreal, it's... You're, you're done. You're gone. Now, this is pretty scary for him versus other ADs. This is what actually, I'd say, makes him scary. Because how many ADs have high movement speed? Draven. MF. Vayne. Now, of course, that's all situational, but the situation I'm talking about is Ezreal being chased down. If you push forward into the lane as Ezreal, most AD carries will be able to hunt him down, uh, get a lot of auto attacks off, and either force a flash or kill him. Which, um, he is in the same uh, boat right now as Anivia, and just the slower characters in the game. So this means that if you mess up with Ezreal, it's easier to punish him now. Arcane Shift is going to be great for going over walls, going to be amazing for going uh, past a turret, for example, defensively. But now, if you try and uh, chase him down, if he can't arcane shift over a wall, he's kind of screwed. Which also adds to rising spell force. This means that arcane shift probably is going to land that, that often uh, as an offensive spell and proc the damage. But if it does, it's going to be super important because rising spell force is passive, lasts 5 seconds instead of 6 now. Now, that doesn't seem that big, but his early game is dramatically affected. So, let's say you're Ezreal, you cast a Mystic Shot, how, what's a cool out of Mystic Shot? 6 seconds, it lands, minus 1. So now, you have a 5 second cooldown on Mystic Shot. That is cool and all, but 5 second duration, 5 second cooldown, this means that with the cast time on Mystic Shot, you're, um, you're not going to maintain the buff. There is very little chance you can maintain um, his passive at level 1. Level 2, a little bit easier if you land a Mystic Shot, or land a Essence Flux, or most likely an Arcane Shift but still very difficult. This means his level 1 to level 2, much weaker. Level 3, also pr pretty weak. Mystic Shot being dependent uh, on landing more or less non-stop means that if you make one small mistake as Ezreal, you lose an up to 50% attack speed buff. You can get it back fairly easily, but think about how his skills are used. Essence Flux, use it at the start of the fight on allies to increase your attack speed and provide yourself with a bonus. 
ultimate. Kind of the same reason you uh, provide yourself the bonus, but also use it at the start of the fight because it's a great opener. Hits almost everybody, deals good uh, upfront damage. Arcane Shift. You can never really use it just to maintain the passive because you have to use it defensively or offensively. Sometimes you have to chase someone down, sometimes you have to get the hell away from someone. So all of his skills besides Mystic Shot have a use, a very specific use. Mystic Shot, you use it and just try to land auto attacks off of that, like you're trying to land hits. So if you miss a Mystic Shot and you don't have Essence Flux available, it means you're going to either risk yourself or waste the ultimate trying to maintain that passive. Which uh, is really important. That is what makes him relevant late game. He has a really high auto attack damage because he gets 50% attack speed. It, it's a surprisingly big uh, nerf. And I think that nerf combined with uh, his movement speed means he won't be picked that often. Versus Misfortune, Draven, the really high damage AD carries. Now True Shot Barrage got nerfed too. This is a fun little nerf that has a little bit of math. So let's, let's look at the current numbers. So you start with 100 damage. This is not the base damage of course, but we'll go with 100. 100 damage, hits a target, 92, hits another target, that's not 8 damage necessarily, a little bit less than that, let's go with um, 84, or 86, that's how much dam dam damage you're dealing, hits another target, down to like 79. Now, with the change, the proposed change, it's going to be 100, to 90, to 81, to 72, let's go 73, good and extra damage. Which, look at the damage difference. It was a, it was 0, then 2, then like 5, then like 6. The numbers are off, but this the overall point is there. The damage will dramatically increase the more target, or the damage difference will dramatically increase the more uh, targets there are. Excuse me for one second. Sometimes you just have to cough. So the damage is going to dramatically uh, decrease the more damage or targets that are being hit. So if there's a big fight and a lot of creeps nearby or you're trying to clear a creep wave, it's a lot weaker. It's much, much weaker. I think everything combined is going to put Ezreal into a very dangerous spot. I don't know. He he may not be picked just because this can be like that final nail in the coffin, the final tipping point. I like Ez. I think he's a good character. He's so safe and defensive. But unless you want to use him for uh, kiting with Frozen Fist, his damage is going to be a lot harder to maintain. His damage overall tends to be lower than other characters. And while he is safe, safety isn't everything. If you can keep him alive but he's not doing enough, it doesn't really matter. Alright, Heimerdinger change, not really a huge deal. Um, cast him removed, quality of life. Cast him being removed means that, you know, if you get jumped, maybe your slow turrets will deal enough slow to uh, keep you alive. Uh, Katarina. So Katarina changes are really, I don't know, they're a bit over the place. So the change they say they want to do is make her build more offensive, so reduce the base damage. This means you build more AP, you do more damage, makes sense. Shumpo uh, has less damage reduction on it. Uh, it's normally 15% uh, for 3 seconds, now it's 15% for 1.5 seconds, which it, it's kind of twofold. This means that if you're a tanky Katarina, that the other team can wait for that to fall off, and if you don't have enough raw mitigation from, let's say, armor, uh, they can just turn and focus you. The thing is, Katarina can get enough raw mitigation from armor very easily by buying a lot of armor because armor items are really good. So, just on its own, it's not a huge change, but don't forget, some of the health items it did get nerfed. So, the other change um, was to make offensive Katarina more viable. They reduced the damage on her ultimate. Even specifically say pulling off well time death lotuses. Death lotus is now worse. So tanky Katarina, I, I think she's still gonna be effective just because the overall damage nerfs aren't that huge. Twenty damage is pretty significant, but this is the skill she maxes out second. So level uh, nine, level ten, uh, if you get into any team fights, the damage difference is gonna be very insignificant. It's gonna be like you know five or ten, which is not a lot of damage to be missing really. Uh, the Shumpo damage reduction, I, I'd say that's the bigger deal. Because even for AP Katarina, you kind of rely on it. You rely on the fact that you're not going to be bursted down quite so quickly. So Tank Katarina now, the fact that she just has her raw stats and her raw stats aren't that effective. She doesn't have extra mitigation like Zen Zhao or a lot of the other bruisers do. She just has 
1.5 seconds of very ignorable <laughs> Tank Katarina, I don't know if that's going to be effective. I don't know if you can really just survive with that. At the same time, offensive Katarina is going to be very risky because you, you have reduced, you have low HP anyways. If you're going pure offense uh, without the Shunpo uh, mitigation, that's that's a very short time window of time they can wait to stun and kill you. Now, what is going to be effective is tanky AP Katarina. She should still be that good middle ground. Well, it's probably better now than the other two roles because you still deal really high damage. And the damage reduction, the fact that it's slower, means that, all right, you can survive uh, despite the lower duration, but you still do stuff. You, you aren't just surviving. I don't know. I, I think it's, it's another uh, situation where she might just not be picked anymore. She was starting to fall off, starting to pick up less and less and less because she is effective, but a lot of characters can shut her down, especially in the mid lane. She'd really become more of a top lane pick in competitive play. Uh, people like Voyboy and Yuzuki picking her up, but I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna like like the reduced damage enough. Um, Kennen change. This is huge. This is massive. Why? Kennen has terrible, terrible energy costs. All right, let's let's crunch some numbers. All right, you're Kennen. You use Lightning Rush. You land a Shuriken. You land a W. You want to just try do deal damage, catch up with someone. So Lightning Rush, hundred energy cost. You're level six. Shuriken lands, fifty energy cost. Uh, use your W, 45 energy cost. Uh, use your ultimate, 50 energy cost. You, you do land uh, your lightning rush, so that's 40 energy refund to you, so minus 40. How much energy did you spend? 205. If you do not land lightning rush, you do not have enough energy to use all of Kennen's skills. And uh, early on, even if you do, uh, you don't have enough. But of course, the regeneration takes come often enough where 5 energy is not a huge deal. Though it has killed me sometimes. Uh, Kennen is already a pretty good character, but he's hard to play, and this is one of the reasons he's hard to play. You can completely ruin his energy. You can just not have spells available. And because of that, because every other AP or energy character in the game, Lee Sin, Zed, Akali, even Manila's characters except Rumble, they all have access to their ultimates all the time. Rumble, you can silence yourself. That's the big problem Rumble has. So, right now... Even at like level 18, if you don't land the lightning rush, you're still spending, let's see, 80, 80 energy. And then I believe an extra maybe 45 from his Q. Yeah, 45 I believe. And then an extra 45 from his W. That's still 170 or 150, 160 and still 40. So you have just enough. But the entire point is you can't spam your spells and you really need to get a lot of shurikens off in team fights as Kennen. A lot of shurikens at land, to be specific. I wouldn't be surprised to see him picked up more. He's already shown some pretty good play in the past, but he is a good character. Lulu, um, picks will do a little bit less damage before level 5 and level 6. I think it evens out at level 5 and starts to do a little bit more afterwards. Um, they want to reduce Pix's early game damage and just make Lulu less of a dominating auto attack uh, support. Because a lot of matchups, especially against worse players, you just auto attack them and you win. Uh, the way she sets up kills, though, it's still really effective to uh, you know use a slow combo and just put someone in a dangerous spot so your uh, AD carry can blow them up. And that has not been changed. So Pix doing less damage. She just can't trade it well. You have to rely on the AD carry a little bit more. And that's kind of what the game was becoming anyways because with Misfortune becoming more popular, Draven and other high AD, damage AD carries, especially at level 1, level 2, this means if Lulu messed up right now, she'd still take way too much damage and the trade wouldn't be worth it. So it's it's a nice little trade. Also, this means a lot more damage at uh, max rank, or max level, if you use picks on an ally. 105 damage, even if it's late game. It builds up fast. Meditate. Now this is another math uh, change. This is one of those changes where it has a pretty big effect, but it's also going to be very unnoticeable in a lot of situations. So let's say you're, you're, you're Mr. E right now. So your mystery, you cast meditate. You have 500 AP. How much do you heal? Uh, assuming max rank uh, meditate. So 700. So 500 times plus 500 times four. That is not what I meant to do. You're at 2,000 with that and 2,700 health overall. How much is that per tick? About 540. So you're at 540 a tick. Mastery E doesn't really get that much HP. Usually. It's about 2,000, 2,100, so three to three ticks and you have most of your life back, four ticks and you're fully healed. What's it going to be after the patch? So you're at 800, you have 500 AP, this means you're at plus 1,000, so 1,800 health overall, 
how much is that per tick? 360. 360 per tick, that's not going to fully heal you. This means you really need to get need to get the full duration off. So characters before, like uh, Tarek, uh, Soraka, the really fast interrupters, and even sometimes Tarek couldn't get it in time, um, they're now going to be able to kill Master Yi. You can't get the Meditate off reliably. This is actually a really significant nerf if the other team was good against Yi. If it was a team that was weak against Yi, uh, didn't have enough interrupts, you could usually get the full uh, duration Meditate off anyways. But this means that E has become a much more uh, specific pick. I'd say he was pretty good with situational in the past. Now he is just super situational. But if you find those right moments, he's going to be super effective. Okay, misfortune. Bullet time nerf. That's your ultimate. What's happening to bullet time? What, what's, what are they doing to it? Well, if you haven't been keeping up with League of Legends, bullet time is a skill where you press R, it hits a team, and you win the team fight. It's such a high damage ultimate, and it's got a really good ratio. This is not for the entire ultimate. This is per wave. It has eight waves. So it's got a 3.6 ratio right now, and it's going to be going down to a 2.8. That's still effective. This means you're losing 80 damage per 100 AD. So you buy a Bloodthirster, you stack it as Misfortune, you deal 80 less damage now. It's still really good. It's still an extra, uh, what was that, 280 damage overall. And she'll still be incredibly effective in team fights, but now it's now it's more like the Master Yi change, where you have to land more of the ultimate to be effective. Because right now you land half an ultimate, or even you know si uh, six eighths of an ultimate, three fourths. It's really good, but now you can, you have to work for it. you have to work for that extra bit of damage. So the Nasus uh, change, it's cute. I, I like what they're doing, but it affects Nasus, Vagar, and Scion, so. Not really the best uh, characters to judge if they're effective or not. Jungle Nasus probably won't be viable. I feel free to give it a shot, but it's still gonna be Nasus, and he needs a lot of farm. It's like to put it in perspective: if you get Wraith Camp versus getting a full wave, it's a lot less uh, to clear out Wraith, Wraith Camp to get a full wave. Well, it's one creep less, though it is reliable. Actually, I'm thinking about this right now. Maybe Jungle Nasus might be a thing. I don't really know how good he is in jungle, though. I think he's only okay. He's not fast. He's a little bit slow. But then eventually you build up so much uh, siphoning strike, you are super fast. There you go. Um, Nunu changes. He's still going to be good. But Nunu, they are making him less passive in lane. They're making him less threatening in late game. So they're saying that they want him to be more active in his support role. Uh, but... That's more of a laning thing. Usually late game, he snowballs, presses R, that's all you really can do. He just doesn't have that many buttons. And he, of course, maintains Blood Boil. Uh, early game, what do you do as Nunu? You sit in a bush, you spam Blood Boil on your teammate, you sometimes run up and snowball, but you can very easily survive a lane just by spamming Blood Boil, and if they get offensive, you snowball. Now, they want to uh, stop the spam, so duration reduced to 12 seconds. Uh, if you want to maintain permanent Blood Boil, you need some CDR. Which is okay. This means that you can't just spam Blood Boil, and you probably have to be a, a bit more aggressive with your Snowball. It's not a devastating change. The late game Nunu combination with Vayne and Kog'Maw is still going to be super effective. It's 45% uh, extra attack speed. That's still an extra 1200 gold in one of the best scaling stats in the game. Attack speed is good uh, late game because, well, it, it's weird, weird to say, but because um, attack speed is better because all of your other stats are better late game. This means that um, you are getting more benefit from your AD, from your crit, from just kind of everything overall. And with a tax, a higher attack speed, everything procs more often. You get more AD, this means that, alright, crit's more effective, and crit damage is more effective. You get more attack speed, everything really builds up late game. So Nunu will still be really good. Um, it's going to be a little bit less reliable to pick him for lanes. He, you can't just pick him in auto win now, or at least auto not lose. But a, a well-played Nunu, a Nunu that kind of reacts with the Blood Boil, is going to be the way to play him now. Olaf nerfs. These are pretty significant nerfs to Olaf. So Undertow, the slow now phase over the duration. This is not a big nerf if you're being chased by Olaf. He's still going to have a very short cooldown on, on the X. He's still going to just beat your ass in, so sorry about that. But if you get caught at max range and he still has to run up and catch the axe and it's not going to be an instant axe falling right after you, you might get away. Um, slows fading over the duration. This happens with Karthus Wall, uh, Lulu's Q, uh, Draven's Speed Up. It actually fades over time. 
and it's it's pretty noticeable. Like lose Q when you get slowed by it, it's a really good slow for like a second, a pretty good slow for a half second, then kind of ignorable for the last uh, quarter, or half second. And it's going to be kind of the same thing for Olaf, where it's really good at the beginning, but then it fades away. I don't know, he will still be effective with the axes, but those long range chases are going to be a lot less common. Vicious Strikes, cooldown increased 16 uh, from 12 seconds. Ragnarok no longer pro uh, provides armor penetration. You have to activate the ultimate to get the armor pen he got before, which was 10, 20, 30. Now it's 10, 20, 30 with the ultimate active. These two combine very, very effectively to say Riot's just sick and tired of the fact that Olaf dealt really high damage and only use the ult defensively. You never use the ult for offense. You use the ult because other people are trying to CC you, even if you're diving in. So if you are Olaf and you dive in and someone CCs you and you press R, you better be near the AD carry. If you are not near the AD carry, you're losing a lot of damage, a ridiculously high amount of damage. Uh, they're really just saying, Olaf, you get too much free damage now, and they're limiting it. Now, I don't know if that's going to keep him up relevant. He should still be pretty good. If he gets really far ahead, he's just not going to care about the early CC and he can get to the AD carry very quickly. But this means that if Olaf doesn't have the ultimate up, he's not only just susceptible to CC, but his damage, it's a lot worse. 30 armor penetration at level 16, that's that's like, I don't know, 30-40% of an AD carries. If you have someone with a black cleaver, you just, you're just you almost hitting someone with no armor. And people know this, and it's, it's very, very scary uh, as a luff now. If you don't have the uh, proper damage or proper penetration... And if you can't really stick on the AD carry for the ultimate non-stop, then um, you're just not going to be that effective. This is one of those scary nerfs where I think Olaf is going to see a lot less play, but I don't know to what extent. Shaco, uh, get nerfed. It's early game ganks. Screw them. So, deceive nerf, and then early ranks of two ship poison. They're just saying, screw Shaco. We don't like Shaco. I hate you, Shaco. Keystrike. Being nerfed on Shen. This is a pretty big nerf. So, the way it works right now, uh, you auto attack and the cooldown on key strike is passive is re reduced by a second and a half and the passive skills with level and hp so level 18 shen with a warmog's randu and sunfire cape deals a lot of damage this is why i used to see a uh, wit send triforce shen uh, and then like sunfire cape in the past before season three rolled in you get the really high hp which provided a lot of damage for his passive wit send provided more mitigation triforce provided a lot of attack speed and also, it would work well with the uh, the spamming from his Q to provide a lot of high auto attack damage. And you would auto attack someone, and you'd auto attack them to death. He could out trade Jace, for example, if you would, if they were both level 18 with a lot of points in their skills, because he would keep proccing that passive, and it just deals so much damage. But a second and a second versus a second and a half. This means that it's going to take an extra two auto attacks in a lot of cases to get that passive back up. Uh, cooldown reduction uh, being reduced on faint. This is a big nerf. I mean, this is the difference between two auto attacks taking it down to a a respectable. Actually, two auto attacks before you should usually take it down to the passive being activated. Now, now it's going to be three. Now it might be four. It's a big nerf to Shen late game, and the fact that he might not be able to one v one as often is super significant. He he should still be good. He should still be effective, but. A lot of the other split pushers can now take him out very easily. If he falls behind, he will stay behind. Um, Scion change. One, it's cute. Who cares about Scion? Sorry. Tristana change. Um, it, just trying to make her more effective early on. Explosive shot normally max. Um, actually, not even second. You put two points into it, then you stop. Uh, maybe it'll be max second now. I mean, the damage is still relatively low on it. 270 versus 230. And rapid shot, the fact that it's usable now <laughs> means that it's probably still going to be maxed uh, after level 8. But, I don't know. I don't know if this will mean less rocket jump. I don't think so, because rocket jump does have the reset. Which means for a, a lane, if you pick up one kill, you can snowball that to a second very quickly. But, I don't know. This is, this is a, a very important change, because normally she runs Umin lane so quickly, rapid fire being a, affordable is a very big deal. It's almost half the cost, and if you can have an extra attack speed bonus for, you know, uh, available twice as often, that's that's a very, very significant deal. Tristana, though, she still has so many other uh, problems uh, related to the fact that explosive shot pu pushes the lane naturally. Um, 
the fact that Rocket Jump has a little wind-up time. She still has a lot of other problems. I don't see her being played that much more often, but the really good Tristana players, the really solid already can play her well, like um, Yellow Pete, they're going to be able to keep pulling her out. Yellow, is it Yellow Pete or Yellow Star who plays Tristana? One of the Yellows plays Tristana well, and they can keep doing it. Tritomir buffs, uh, attack speed buff, means if you do get onto someone and you're not getting kited, you deal a lot more damage. I do not know if this will uh, make them uh, viable top lane. Fury Decay being lower, this is a little bonus to uh, jungle Tryndamere, because if you jungle as Tryndamere, uh, when you spinning Slash, it's usually about 5 seconds, so you might lose a little bit of Fury. Lane Tryndamere, it's a very big buff, because you know in between creep waves, or just if you get it zoned out for a brief second, you maintain that Fury, which might be a lot more healing, a lot more damage if you all in. It's pretty significant. But at the same time, Tryndamere's base kit is just not that good, so susceptible to kiting, and he's a bit of a, a low damage assassin in the end, a, like a sustained damage assassin in a, a game right now where everybody is a super duper tanky bruiser or super mobile. I I don't know, not enough people play Tryndamere to really judge if this will be enough, but it's nice. I think this will give him really fast jungle clears, that's a really high base attack speed. Vigar, now this is a change where I think a lot of people have thought whether or not it's a change that makes sense or a change that is ridiculous. So you use Baleful Strike on a monster, uh, like a Cannon Creep or Golem or Blue Buff or Baron, you get an extra 2 AP, or extra AP. Now I've heard some people say because they use the word champion here that it's not just an extra AP because normally it's 5 AP from champion kills. I think people think it might be 10 AP now or you get because it's being doubled or you get 5 plus 2 from the champion kill which is 7. I'm not positive. Um, if any of those changes are true, especially the 10 AP for a champion kill, holy crap Vigar is going to be good. But it probably isn't so not a huge deal. Vi, nothing too big. This is actually Vault Breaker. A lot of the time you'd play Vi, you'd get to the end of her dash and it just wouldn't hit. So that is actually a really nice change. Oh, Volibear change. Now, the reason this is a big change is because not so much for the, I guess, the jungle clear time. They mentioned that, but his, his Fury, his execute passive you can get that up really quickly now you can auto attack creeps and he's gonna have really high base attack speed and he's a champion that scales with really high base attack speed or with really high attack speed because of his ultimate because of the fact that you, sh you shoot lightning from your claws so I don't think this will put him to viable but maybe it'll make him really scary top laner because if you always have the execute available which uh, with you know not necessarily a 10% increase to attack speed but like an eight percent increase to attack speed might be enough. I'm I'm thinking he might be good now. All right, items. Okay, okay. How much would you pay for a chain vest and blasting rod? Seven twenty plus eight sixty. That is fifteen eighty. How much do you pay for Seeker's arm guard, which will provide well better bonuses? 1160. Of course it has to stack up. It's not instant, but my god, that is an efficient item. That is a very, very good item because it provides you, you know, 1580 worth of stats. Actually, more than that for 1160. It's going to be like, I'd say maybe 1650, I think. And um, that's just a low ball. So, Seeker's Arm Guard is really damn good. Uh, Zonia's Hourglass, they're changing it and making it more expensive because they want to give it more AP. So, uh, the goal is give items more AP, because people are saying AP casters aren't doing enough late game. So, if you now have an incentive to buy AP items and go for a late game because you deal more damage, well, it's a good way to start. It's uh, only a few items right now, I believe, that have been changed like that. Um, Sight Stone. I mean, the, the, the note is right there. They're tired of all that annoying warding going on. This is an important change from a economy perspective though. So you buy a sight stone now and it's it saves you 150 gold every three minutes. A philo stone will get, give you an extra 90 gold. A cage's lucky pick will give you an extra 72 gold. 
So Sight Stump, which was cheaper than Akato's Lucky Pick, was giving you twice the gold efficiency. So it's not quite the same as giving you gold per 5 or gold per 10. It's gold you're not spending. And a Ruby Sight Stone was still providing the extra 75 every 3 minutes. And even though it was you know, less than a Philistone, Stone, it was still cheaper. And still gave you really good stats. So they're, they're, from that perspective, the fact that Philistone, or that uh, Sight Stone is now more expensive means that even though you save more money with it, the higher price means you shouldn't be getting it really early. Maybe. Maybe. It's still a really good stats. It's still a health item. Health items on support are amazing. I will say this probably limits uh, Sight Stone to the one support role. You're, you're not going to see many junglers pick it up, even though a few did in the past, just because uh, 950 gold is a lot of gold from the jungle. Um, the rewards for Sight Stone means uh, pink wards are a lot more effective. Before, if uh, I put a ward in a bush and I wanted to keep vision, I would just keep tossing a ward in there, even if they kept killing them, because who cares? 10 gold being given to the support, not a big deal, but 25 gold, that builds up very quickly. Uh, Giant's Belt nerf, that's a very small nerf, that's a, a cute little nerf, look at that, at 380 instead of 400, 20 HP nerf, um, some people were buying two at once, it's still going to be effective for them to buy two at once, just because that's still 760 HP. Uh, Warbog's armor, more expensive, this is going to combine with another uh, another nerf, which is Sunfire Cape is more expensive, so the total combined cost uh, now is going to be Let's see, 5480. Before it used to be 5150. So that's 330 more gold to buy those two items. Now, it's not the biggest difference. It's still a relatively small gold amount, and the items, you know, they still have the same stats as before, so they're still really good. But. The fact that you're paying a little bit more, 330 gold means it just delays it by a tiny bit. And 330 gold on one character, especially if it's someone who isn't a um, laner, a jungler, or sometimes even top lane, who's getting a little bit less income, uh, it's going to be hard to finish that combo. It's It delays it by one to two minutes, depending on what role you're in. And I think that one those one to two minutes could be important, especially given the fact that, you know, Zonia, Zonia's now gives you more damage now. Um, Stuff like that, like, they're just kind of delaying the stronger items so that people have enough damage to deal with it. Alright, change it coming up after that. Finish Codex is also part of another blanket set of changes. So Finish Codex costs a little bit less to provide mana regen. So Nasher's Tooth is going to be a little bit more effective for champions that don't use mana. Same with uh, Banner Command. Same with DFG. Though uh, DFG now costs more and provides more ability power. So it's still... That one's a little bit different. But o overall, the, most items cost a little bit less, and they don't provide mana regeneration if they did in the past. And that's... Well, they're changing that because... You know, Nasher's 2 doesn't really have a good character to fit on. A lot of characters the mana, mana regeneration who could use Nasher's 2 is like, let's just say Jax. The mana regeneration was a little bit wasted on. It's still a very niche item, and we'll probably not see that much play, but some of the rare characters that could use it, maybe Teemo, maybe someone like that, can bust it out a little bit more often. Orianna? Auto-attack Orianna? Come on. Banner of Command is still not very good, I'm sorry. DFG uh, is amazing, and now it's better, a little bit later late game. So, kind of going for that, casters should be able to kill late, uh, tanky characters late game. That's been the, the theme of these changes. Merlinomicon... Not nothing too exciting. It's very very efficient. It's always been very efficient, but I think people tend to look, look for more more the like the wowy stats. Athena's Unholy Grail. This is actually a, a relatively big change. It's two hundred gold less, but they took out a lot of the stats um, for the season three changes. So it's a good item now, but it's outshined by items like uh, DFG, like Zonia's, like uh, the Rabidon's Death Cap. The fact that it's only 2600 now, that's a pretty low price tag, especially given the fact that other AP items now have more AP but cost more. So if you can use a utility, it's a lot more accessible now. Uh, Bloodthirster got its cost increase to uh, 3200. The point of this was that every AD carry ever was blind blood Bloodthirster. <laughs> so I think they're trying to move a little bit away from that. It's really effective and it's really good for dueling and really good for keeping bruisers off, off them. 
but even if it's a little bit more expensive, you know, maybe now if they do decide to buy it, because the tanks are buying uh, Sunfire Kit from Warmogs a little bit later, it won't be that big of a deal. Black Cleaver has some changes overall. They're nerfs. Um, health reduced to 200 from 300, so a little less tankiness. Maximum stacks from 5 to 4. You do get more penetration in the end. You do go to 25% reduction instead of uh, 24%, but, um, you know, that's still not that much. That's still not really worth the, the build-up time. Uh, I think if you math out, for example, or uh, Misfortune's Ultimate, the old Black Cleaver would do more damage. This is just saying Black Cleaver is a good item. We like where it is, but we don't want to let it get too far out of control. And that's kind of the story for the rest of the items. Uh, Triforce, just from here on out, these are just underused, and people say, are thinking maybe let's get them used a bit more. Spirit Stone, very few characters are picking it up, and very few pick characters are picking up the uh, upgrades, especially in tournament play. It's just not happening. Like the price nerfs or the price reductions are huge. 400 gold off spe uh, Spirit of Spectral, Spectral Wraith, 100 gold off Spirit Stone. They're very accessible now. Same with Triforce. People just aren't picking it up. So Rise trying to make it more accessible. You know, if the items they think are in a good spot, make it more accessible. Make people want to pick them up. Um. <laughs> I thought this was already in place, this change to matchmaking, and um, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, because number of wins is not necessarily an indicator of skill, but we'll see how that plays out. If your cues get worse, it's probably because of this change. And uh, yeah, that's about it for the patch notes. They have these little small changes here. So UI stuff, nothing too major, and uh, actually... If you've ever uh, never seen the Rengar Kazix uh, quest prop pop up, maybe this will happen now. But yeah, that's all for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this. It's been a while since I did one of these, and my throat, it is totally, totally dead. So just remember one big thing. There is more Jarvan the Four on all bot maps, and that's all for now. Adios, folks.